Hi there. Welcome to Storytime at Home. I'm Miss Allison and it is great to have you with me. Today's story time is for the birds. I have three picture books and a paper plate craft for you. But before we get to that, just wanted to remind you that Summer Reading Club will conclude at the end of July. You do still have time to log your minutes. Uh, you just go to our website, www.faylib.org, and use the program Read Squared. We still have lots of online events coming up, our story times, our workshops, uh, guest performers and presentations, so lots still to enjoy uh, throughout the month. That can be all found on our calendar at our website as well. So uh, we are limited, are open at the library for limited hours. It's grab and go, so you come in and find the books and materials that you want to check out. Please say hello while you're there. Don't forget to wear your mask. <laughs> All right, let's get started. This first book is called The Perfect Nest. Jack the cat gathered together everything he needed and then built the perfect nest dry and cozy and just the right size. But the nest was not for Jack. With this perfect nest, he would attract a perfect chicken who would lay a perfect egg, which would make a perfect omelet for a cat like Jack. And soon enough, a chicken came along. Look how fancy that is. See the Christmas lights? And there's a fan and a welcome mat. Pretty neat. Caramba, she cried, a perfect nest. She hopped up and laid a small egg. Then a duck waddled by. Sacre bleu, she cried, the perfect nest. And my accent is terrible, sorry. <laughs> the duck pushed the chicken out, hopped up and laid a medium sized egg. Then a goose lumbered by. Great balls of fire, she cried, a perfect nest. The goose pushed the duck out, hopped up and laid a large egg. Jack's mouth began to water. Three eggs would make three omelets. But then the duck leaped onto the goose's back. This is my nest. The chicken flew up onto the duck. No, this is my nest. The three cackled and quacked and honked, but each refused to leave the perfect nest. They squished each other for days. <laughs> each day, Jack tried to get the birds off the eggs. Fire, fire, he cried but they didn't move. Flood, flood, he cried. They still didn't move. Wolf, wolf, he cried. But the chicken, the duck, and the goose would not move. Look, he's dressed up like a little red riding hood there. And look at his little floaty and his boat paddle and his flippers. Jack is a silly cat. <laughs> Finally, Jack stood before them. You birds are silly. The next farm over has an even better nest and it's empty. Why doesn't one of you just use that nest? An empty nest, cried the chicken, without a goose to sit on my head? Caramba! Sacre bleu, cried the duck. I am tired of smelling ze like ze chicken. That nest is mine. Great balls of fire, cried the goose, out of my way. And they all flapped away. Alone at last, Jack returned to the nest and peeked inside. He arranged the eggs neatly in a row. Small breakfast, medium lunch, and large dinner. Jack's stomach rumbled. But then, crack, the small egg broke, and out popped a wet baby chick who looked up at Jack and said, Hola, mama, crackety snap. The medium-sized egg broke open and out scrambled a wet baby duck who looked up at Jack and said, Bonjour, Maman. Crackety, crackety, boom. The neck, the largest egg broke open and out stepped a wet baby goose 
who looked up at Jack and said, Great balls of fire! Howdy, Ma! Jack stared at the babies. What was he to do? He couldn't make omelets out of them. Dry me, dry me, dry me, cried the soggy baby chick. Feed me, feed me, feed me, cried the hungry baby duck. Play, 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 cried the excited baby goose. How cute are they? What is he gonna do? Jack hid in the barn. The three babies found him. He hid in the woods. The three babies found him. Jack hid under the tractor. See him right there? Are they gonna find him? I think so. The three babies found him and dragged him back to the nest. <laughs> Sleep, 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 the tired babies finally whispered. Cold, 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 said the shivering babies. Drat Jack scratched his head. Someone had to care for these babies, but there was no one else around. Look at those little munchkins in his arms. How sweet is that? Jack lifted all three babies into the nest. Buenas noches, mama, said the baby chick. Bon dui, mama, said the baby duck. Sweet dreams, Ma, said the baby goose. Then Jack climbed into the nest and the babies fell asleep. And that's when he realized that this really was the perfect nest. Yay! I love that ending. <laughs> oh my gosh, love that book. Okay. The next bird book is called Ducks Don't Wear Socks. Or do they? Emily was a serious girl. One day, while she was in a serious mood, taking a serious walk, she met Duck. Duck was definitely not serious. He is riding a unicycle and juggling fruit. How talented is he? Duck asked Emily, what are you wearing? Socks, yelled Duck. Ducks don't wear socks, replied Emily quite seriously. Cold feet, yelled Duck, and off he went. The next day they met again. Emily was still serious. Duck was still not. No socks, laughed Duck. But Emily pointed out quite earnestly, you're wearing a tie. Ducks don't wear ties. Big meeting, yelled Duck, and off he ran, tie flapping in the wind. He even has a briefcase. The day after, Emily was still a serious girl, but she almost smiled when she saw Duck again. What has he got on? A hat, asked Emily. I've never seen a duck wear a hat. Late for the roundup, yelled Duck, and off he galloped into the sunset. Emily almost laughed, but she bit her lip and managed to stay serious until the next day. Duck, Emily began to ask, are those boots, yelled Duck, fields to plow and plant, plants to crop, or <laughs> crops to plant, got it backwards. <laughs> you see his big boots? Emily's lips slowly curled into a smile, and she kept smiling until the next day when... Let's stop and look at that. Oopsie, probably wasn't supposed to be digging in the public garden. <laughs> He's trying to talk his way out of it. <laughs> Duck, exclaimed Emily at the sight of Duck wearing underwear, yelled Duck. <laughs> I've never, ever seen a duck wearing underwear, Emily gasped. Pants on the line, yelled Duck, and off he sailed, not the least bit embarrassed. Emily smiled, and then she began to giggle. I think he's doing his laundry, because you see that box of soap right there? I think he's washing his pants in the water. How funny is that? Oh, there's the rest of his laundry. See it on the top of the boat? <laughs> Oh, there she is, asleep, and look, look at her toy. She's got a toy duck. Before she went to sleep that night, Emily laughed just a little bit to herself. 
The next day, Emily just happened to meet Duck again. But this time, Emily called Duck, what are you wearing? Can you tell by that picture what she's got on? Let's turn the page and see. I'm a duck, cried Emily. A duck, yelled Duck. <laughs> Emily laughed so hard that she cried. Duck laughed so hard that he quacked. <laughs> and off they went. <laughs> the silliness. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, one more, and then I'll show you the craft for today. This last book is called The Sheep Who Hatched an Egg. What? <laughs> Lola the sheep had extraordinary wool. It was shiny, it was silky, it was soft, and it never, ever tangled. Lola spent hours washing, drying, and brushing her wool to make it absolutely perfect. When she was finally ready, Lola loved walking through the farm. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she perfect? Isn't her wool extraordinary, said all the other sheep. And Lola felt proud and happy. But one hot day, something terrible happened. All the sheep had to have a haircut. And Lola's extraordinary wool was gone. Now you'll feel nice and cool, said the dog. But Lola felt ridiculous without her shiny, silky wool. All she wanted to do was hide. Poor Lola. Oh my goodness. So off she went to the far side of the hill where she waited and waited and waited. And little by little, her wool grew back. Lola's wool didn't grow back shiny or silky. It wasn't even soft. It was wild, it was messy, and it tangled. It's horrible, cried Lola. Just then, a small, delicate egg landed on Lola's head. You see it falling from the tree? But her wool was now so thick, she didn't even notice. <laughs> That night was very cold, but the little egg was safe and snug, wrapped in Lola's messy wool. And there it stayed until... Lola woke to find a small, excited chick sitting on her head. Look how pretty it is. All different colors. I love that little birdie. Lola loved the chick's colorful feathers and its beautiful songs. And the chick loved Lola's kindness and her very messy wool. See her feeding the little bird berries? <laughs> it's so fluffy. It's so warm. Your wool is extraordinary, said the chick each night. And Lola felt proud and happy to have helped her little friend. Lola and the chick had so much fun together. Each day the chick grew bigger and stronger. See them playing? And Lola grew bigger and fluffier, but the days were getting hotter and hotter. I need a haircut, puffed Lola, and I need to see the world, sang the bird. They both knew it was time to say goodbye. The next day, they wished each other good luck and hoped they'd meet again. I do too. <laughs> Lola returned to the farm she didn't look perfect, but it didn't matter. She was so happy to see her friends. Now Lola felt nice and cool, and she no longer missed her shiny, silky wool. This time, when it grew back, she hoped it would be wilder and fluffier than ever before. And it was. Look at that. How many eggs does she have in her wool this time? Can you count them? One, two, three. You think maybe that bird came back? 
and hatched a family in Lola's wool? I think so. I would like that to be the ending. Isn't that neat? I love it. <laughs> okay. Your craft today requires paper plates. Paper plates and construction paper. You'll need some glue and scissors and some googly eyes and some coloring pencils or crayons up to you and you are going to make a nest. Here's what it looks like. How fun is that? Do you recognize that from the book, first book that I read, The Perfect Nest? Look at that, it's the three babies. And if you look really closely behind them, that's the barn with the Christmas lights that Jack hung up for them. How fun is that? And then I made a second one because bluebirds are my favorite birds and I couldn't help it. I just had to do a second one. This one looks more like it's in a tree. There's a little bit of a blue sky behind it and some leaves. So it's tucked down into the tree branches and here are some twigs and there are those two baby bluebirds. So yeah, all you have to do is you're going to take, what do I do with my paper plates? Oh, they're hiding. <laughs> okay, you'll need one whole paper plate and then you're going to cut a second one in half. You can just fold it and uh, cut along the line and make it nice and straight. Okay. And you can just cut color whatever background you want for the nest. Like I said, like I did mine, it can be up in a tree or you can put it in the barn and do a nest like Jack built. And then I would go ahead and I would color the nest itself first before attaching it to the background. And then once you have that done, you're just going to put it together like that. I stapled mine together, but you can use glue. Uh, that should work just fine. And then you're gonna uh, make your baby birds out of construction paper and googly eyes. And then you're just gonna tuck them right in. And it kinda has this neat layered or 3D effect uh, to have all the different parts put together that way. So let me show you the finished product again. And this is a fun way of practicing your shapes because you have lots of circles and you have some triangles and you might even be able to figure out a way to incorporate squares or rectangles. But see, that half plate creates a pocket. You just tuck your little birds down in there and I secured them with tape, okay? So a whole plate, decorate it with a backdrop of your choice. And then the half plate's gonna be the nest and you attach the two together. And then you make your birds out of two circles and a little triangle for the beak and googly eyes if you've got them. And again, you can use color, uh, colors or uh, coloring pencils or paint to, to do the details, whichever you prefer. And there you've got it, a fun little nest. Here's the other one. All right, tweet, tweet guys. I will see you later. Thanks for joining me. Bye. <laughs>